Welcome to Job Forum. My name is George, and today I'm going to show you a quick overview of the elements to get you started right away. So follow me to my desktop right now. All right, let's get started to show you what the fields are for. So on our left, we have our form elements. Now we divide this in three categories. One is basics, payments, and widgets. Let's get started with basics. Now basics, we have several elements available. Some of them are really straightforward and some of them are more complex. So let's get through these really quickly. For example, header. Header will let you add text to your form. This is not a field where the user is gonna input something, it's just text that you want to add to the form. Next thing we have is full name, which is obviously the name. But if you need to go in through more in depth, we'll go into properties. For example, options, if you want to add the middle name, prefix, suffix, well, we can enable those or disable them. Let's get rid of this one. Next thing we have is the email. You capture the email. The address, well, it's the whole address field right here. It's pretty useful when you need to capture the address. Again, if you need to edit the properties, well, we'll go into properties for this one. Next thing we have is the phone. You capture the phone number. The date picker, this one's really interesting because it lets you select the date via you can type it in or you can click on the little calendar. Let me show you the preview for this. Okay, so now we can type in the date or we can click on the calendar and it enables it. Okay, let's get rid of this one. Next thing we have is appointments. Really useful if you want to use your form for taking appointments. To enable this, we have to go into properties and set the information for appointments. For a specific guide, do go ahead and view this link right here. Next thing we have is a signature. If you want to have your form capture signatures, well, you can add this element. Um, you can make it required or not required. It depends on what you want to use the form for. Next thing we have is fill in the blanks. Really useful when you want to make, for example, a contract or maybe you just need to fill in the gaps. For example, if this was the first one, I have to fill in my name and then I have to fill in my age and just certain fields that are in between. Next thing we have is product list. This one is for the payment gateway. We must add a payment gateway to this one to use the product list. Okay, let's get rid of this one. Short text, if we want to add short text here, fields which are one of the most used ones, and long text. Now, you can see short text is pretty self-explanatory. If you want short answers, and if you need long answers, then you add the long text. Let's get rid of these. Next thing we have is the paragraph. If you need to add text to your form, for example, if we edit the text, we have all the information available to add right here. So for example, if I add, see this form, for example, and there it is, it adds the text to it. Next thing we have is drop down. Drop down is a drop down menu where we click on it, we can edit this. For example, it could be one, two, three, four, just example, and it works as a drop down. Let me show you the preview form. Okay, click on it. We have the drop down menu right here. Let's get rid of this. Now, if you want a single choice, we add this one. For example, we add the choices right here and it's a single choice selection. Next thing we have is multiple choice. So if you need the user to select multiple or give them the option to select multiple and not just a single choice, we add this one. Next thing we have is numbers. If you need a numbers field where it only accepts numbers, we add this one. So this is different from short text because short text will let you add numbers and text and this one will only limit to numbers. So for example, if you're asking for the age, you want to add this type of field. Next one is the image. If we want to add an image right here, useful. If you want to, for example, add a logo, we add it on top. If you're not using the top logo section right here, or if you need to add an image in between the form. Next thing we have is file upload. Really useful when you want to allow users to upload their file. You can limit the type of file that they can upload. For example, if you want to allow only images, well, you allow them BMP, JPG, and those kind of extensions to only allow those type of files. Or if you only allow zip files, then you can enable those on the properties. Next thing we have is time. So if you need a time-based field right here, you just add this one. Captcha, if you need to add a captcha for a security for security reasons so that you don't spam their form where people just fill it out several times over and over and over, well, we add this element for the captcha. We have a spinner. For example, this one lets you add or subtract numbers. So it gives you that options, minus and plus. Submit, 
If you need to add another submit button, you can see it's similar to this one. Next thing we have is the survey elements. Really useful when you want to grab input from your users or give several options. For example, we have the input table, which allows this type of survey questions. For example, left, we have the question, and on the right, we have the answer, and we can add these. For example, if we add, add another column or reduce the column, but you get the idea of how this works. Star rating, if that's the type of survey you're looking for. For example, how was our service? And you can give them a star rating. If we go into the options, we can add more stars or deduct stars. If we, if we want to make it a 10 star, or if we want to change the star to another icon, we can also do it in the properties. We got scale rating. So this one is a one through five. Again, if we go into properties, we can change this to 10 or whatever number you would like. And next we have the page element. So this one, this one lets you, for example, add a divider. So for example, there's a little divider in case you want to like divide this, a section collapse. If you want to collapse the section again, properties are available right there. And let's get rid of this one. We have the page break page break. lets you like you see right here, page break. Let me add two elements just so you see what happens. All right, let's preview this form and it divided. Now it became a step form. For example, here's the first step and then we jump into another one. If we add another page break, well, we can add more elements and make it in steps. That's what they do. Next thing we have, well, let's get rid of these first. Next thing we have is the payment elements. Now, depending on the gate payment gateway that you want to use, what we selected right here, there's several payment gateways available and we can use the search bar if we need to search for one of them. And next thing we have is widgets. Widgets are super cool and they're super useful once you get to use them. For example, there's several ones like e-signature, form calculator, take, take photo, and many other that are available. I recommend that you use a search widget to find the one that you need. And if you need more information for widgets, I recommend you check out the link here on top of the video or in the description. Well, I hope this helped you out to understand the basic elements of JotForm so you could get started right away. We thank you all for watching and we'll see you on our next tutorials.